Oh, welcome. Thanks, Anne. It's been nice to have you here. Yes, it's lovely mm. to have you here as well. Mm. Beautiful. Look at natural, nature's exuberance. It's a beautiful exhibition, Lois. Congratulations. Mm. It's very different from your first, even though you've been using the same techniques. Mm. Looks to me like you've introduced one of my favourite colours. Okay. okay, very good. <laughs> well, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about what's behind nature's exuberance for you. Okay, it's, a little, it's about uh, opening our eyes to, or my eyes, to see um, what's in the world around us and things that we might pass by and just think is ordinary um, and not take the time to stop and look at them. So I'm kind of interested in um, showing people what is out there and, and hoping that they might take the time to just stop and have a look and and, and see nature's exuberance and the, the joy of um, what's out there in nature. The colours have changed a lot mm. since you've been uh, to New Zealand. Mm. What's that about, Lois? The, the, um, I think what you're saying is that the, uh, the colour is stronger and I think that's a little bit about New Zealand, the influence of New Zealand. Uh, when the sun is shining in New Zealand, the, um, the sky is so blue and the grass and the vegetation is so green that um, I can't but help be influenced by that. Um, and I think New Zealanders are colourful people too. <laughs> My experience of of that, yes. I'm sure we won't get into a conversation no. about differences <laughs> between and over the ditch. Um, and your technique, you've perfected this um, extraordinary detail technique of um, thread painting and art quilts. Let's talk about the thread painting. Mm -hmm. I've been doing thread painting for a long time, as you know, Anne, and uh, I've developed that over the years to in a personal way and um, to use it to express what's inside for me. And so the thread paintings are completely stitched and they take uh, quite a long time to create. Uh, I take a photograph of something that appeals to me that I'm inspired by in the, in the world around me and then I draw it out from that photograph and then create a thread painting around that. And it, it may be that um, I add things to... Uh, the images um, to change them to make them express what's inside for me so it might be that for example can i show you this one here where it's a it's a leaf but i have actually um, expanded out so often my work is about reducing it to its simplest form and then expanding it out in a way that um, gives an expression to what is going on for me inside so this one here i've added swirls and I've um, changed the slight structure slightly but um, you could, it's still recognisable as a leaf. And with these ones here, these were inspired by uh, tulip buds and I've added my own personal touch to them to create something that's um, a bit uniquely me. So you start with a blank piece of white cloth. Yes. Yes. And you draw with your sewing machine. That's right. It's free motion uh, embroidery, I guess, is the other title that's given to this sort of work. And so it's not computerised at all. It's completely freehand. And I do draw an outline on the, on the blank um, fabric to start with, but I don't draw in all the detail. It just gives me a bit of a guide. Sometimes I have only very few... <laughs> pencil lines to start with and I just let it go to how I, um, yeah, as, a, as the image speaks to me as I, as I work along. How come it's so neat? <laughs> what do you do in your head to be able to sit for such length of time, to be able to keep it so neat? Um, I guess I get into a bit of a zone, med meditative zone when I'm doing it, a bit, very, um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a space that I go to. I've been doing it for a long time, so that's, I guess I've got quite a good control over the sewing machine now. Um, and that's part of who I am, I suppose. I, I like that um, hard edge in, in a lot of my work. It's quite um, 
neat, as you say. It's very neat and very structured. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's actually um, a word that's been quite important in this exhibition structure, not only just the structure of the thread paintings and the, and the way that they're created, or the, the, the art quilts, but also in, in finding the structure in the um, subject material, you know, the structure of the flowers or the structure of the plant, they're quite sculptural, a lot of them are quite sculptural, and I look at the structure of, um, of the plant and how it speaks to me to be expressed, yeah. And Lois, the other area that you've worked in is art quilts. Yes. I'd love you to talk about this beautiful uh, piece that's behind you. Okay, just a little bit of background about why I'm interested in seahorses and sea dragons. Um, a number of years ago, uh, we had a family holiday in Tasmania and we went to a seahorse farm down in Launceston and we got to hold the, a seahorse um, and I fell in love with these beautiful little creatures and they um, are known as flagships of the ocean because if they are starting to be affected then you know that the health of the environment um, is not good. So they're very important little creatures and the other thing that they're um, very good at doing is, is camouflaging and so they change colour and it's quite, it was quite amazing seeing them in a, a tank with a, a yellow or an orange or red rope and they had changed colour to suit to, to camouflage themselves in with that. So I, they give me a lot of artistic licence to um, colour them in <laughs> how I might, uh, how they speak to me. So I have had a little journey with seahorses and sea dragons and creating um, art quilts and thread paintings with them. And um, this particular one here, Leafy Sea Dragon, I wanted to do a big one and I started out with just a white piece of um, off white piece of fabric and I drew in all I did was a, a, a very general outline of the sea dragon and uh, the um, framing of it and the rest of it is just drawn intuitively on the sewing machine so quilted um, and then I hand colored it in so it took about three days to quilt to draw it and then it took me actually quite a long time, a couple of months to colour it in because I didn't have a pattern, I was just going intuitively. So I had never entered anything in a um, competition or an exhibition overseas and so I just decided to enter this one in the World Quilt Competition in America and um, was accepted, was juried in and to my complete and utter delighted surprise I got third prize in um, the innovative section so uh, that was a lovely um, acknowledgement I suppose um, and it, it's I enter them and because it helps me to get my name out there it's another, just another way of you know exhibitions are wonderful things to do but um, it, it, other ways of getting your name out there is to enter um, juried exhibitions and competitions and um, how they go is it's, I'm just putting them out there, but it, but it takes courage to do that too, and I think um, it's nice to have some acknowledgement of that. And congratulations on that. Thank Looking you. at this piece, it's absolutely perfect. It seems to me like not one stitch uh -huh. is out of place. So I've looked and looked for the last few days. I have no idea how you do that. It's extraordinary for you to be able to sit and do free machine like that. It's, it's a lovely, it's a really nice thing to do. I love doing it. I love, I, I, I love tact, the tactile qualities of um, textiles. I, my, a lot of my artwork lends itself to printmaking as well and I've dabbled in printmaking over the years. But what I love about textiles is the added dimension of the tactile quality in that um, there's something I just love about fabric. And I suppose I started down the textile journey um, I majored in that at, at university and it was a way of marrying two things that I love to do and that was to sew and to um, create and draw. I love drawing. I can draw with, you know, I just love drawing with pencil as well. So um, just putting them all together uh, into textiles and I, that's where it seems to be taking me. And are you going to start introducing some of the flora and fauna from New Zealand because they're so remarkably different, we're much 
more sort of greys and greens in Australia for our flower and bush, yes. not, not necessarily our wildlife. Yes, um, certainly I've started taking photos of a lot of New Zealand um, flora and uh, have started drawing. I haven't actually, it, it sometimes takes a while for, for that to germinate and to become, come out in, in the work, but um, certainly it's, the journey has started. Mm. And where to, for you from here, where do you think your work might expand into? Good question, Anne. I've been focused on getting this exhibition together. I've, um, I can see the development of my work from, you know, the from the time that I started. You know, talked to you about having an ex another exhibition here. Um, you know, there's the um, the colour development, and I'll continue along that journey. I guess of adding colour and getting. I met a lady last year in New Zealand in Tauranga when I was looking for, you know, framers. <laughs> Because I had to, you know, build all those contacts again, and um, she looked. She looked at my thread. I had three paintings there, and she said, "Oh, you need to put some colour in the background. You know, you could really use some colour in the background." And that's what I have started to do in in a number of the thread paintings, rather than just the um, um, off white background. And so, I think you meet people along the way that kind of maybe point you in a direction and. Or suggest something, and um, I uh, color. I mean, I love color, so it's it's just coming out. Finding my voice. I'm going to continue on that journey. Well, you've certainly found it, particularly with the introduction of orange. Yes, oh, that's been a, <laughs> a really personal journey of discovering orange and and enjoying working with orange. Well, I look forward to seeing your next exhibition, which I think will be even more colourful. So hopefully you'll be back at Tandis Textiles in the next few back. years. Congratulations very much on this beautiful show. Thank you, Anne. And it's been lovely to have the time here with it. And, and you've hung it beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>